Today we're going to learn about crystals and how they react with different substances like water, for example. From your home, you're going to need some sugar and some salt and separate them out into separate bags because we don't want to accidentally mix some of the chemicals we're using today with the salt and the sugar that your family uses. Additionally, you're going to need probably about a cup of water. From your kit, you're going to need your test tubes. You can use a beaker, one of your measuring mixing yellow spoons like this. You can use a pipette if you want, and you're going to need your three Petri dishes. I've put mine here um, on a paper plate just to make things a little bit easier for me to see. Okay, so what we're gonna do right now is we're going to see how different types of crystals react with water and the different reactions that occur. So first we need to do is we need to measure 15 milliliters of water into each of our Petri dishes. And we can do that using our test tubes. It might be easier if you want to pour it into um, a beaker and then into the test tube. The beaker only measures out to 50 and 100 milliliters. It's not enough to get to the smaller amounts, so the test tubes help us measure to exactly the smaller amounts. For me, it's a little bit easier. I have this little pitcher here to pour. So I'm going to first pour directly into my test tube until I get about 15 milliliters. You can use your pipette if that's easier for you. Let's see here, 15 milliliter line, okay? Pour into my first Petri dish. Okay. Petri dish number two. And whoop, a little bit extra. Yeah. Petri dish number three. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside, set my water aside. Now I'm gonna take my spoon and first I'm going to start with my sugar. And I'm just going to take, I'll start with one or two scoops and I want to mix it in to my water solution until it dissolves, which means you cannot see it anymore. So I'll take, here's one scoop and then I'll do a smaller second scoop. And I'm going to use the back end of my mixing spoon and just mix it until I cannot see my crystals anymore. Okay, and you can wipe off the end if you want. Now the second, I'm going to do my salt and repeat the same thing with another Petri dish. And you can label these if you want. You can label your bags if it's hard to tell them apart. Just make sure you do not confuse the urea crystals that come in your kit with salt or sugar because if you accidentally ingest or eat them, that can be dangerous. So my salt, eh, one. I'm gonna do about a scoop and a half for each of these. That's what's been working well. I'm gonna mix them up until it's nice and dissolved. And make sure your water comes from the same source so that they're all the same temperature. For example, fill them all up, water from the same pitcher, from the same tap. Okay, and now my urea crystals. And you wanna be careful with these. You have the option, you can use gloves if you want. Make sure that it, they do not accidentally get rubbed into your eyes or your nasal passages or your mouth, okay? I'm going to do about a scoop or and a half of these. Whoop. Oh, one. Okay. I'm going to mix it up. Break up a little clump here. Okay. It might take a little while to get it mixed up all the way. That's why it's good to start with just one scoop, probably. Okay, they're dissolving nicely. Okay, set your spoon aside. Now what you need to do is you need to lift each one and place it on your hand and carefully and feel the temperature underneath. 
This feels, the one with the sugar feels the same as when I began, the water hasn't changed temperature or anything. Then I'm going to lift the next one with the salt. Again, feels the same, nothing has changed. And then lift the one with urea and see if you notice anything. This one, in my opinion, feels a little bit colder. This is because of a chemical reaction called an endothermic reaction, which means the urea interacts with the water to make to take heat in, release coldness. It's quite fun. You can experiment with different amounts of each substance and with other things you might have around your house. Just make sure that you have an adult help you to know which you're safe. Hi there. For our experiment today with crystals, you're going to need a few things from home. You're going to need some water. I have just about a cup. And it can just be normal tap water. That's absolutely fine. I have um, a paper plate under my petri dishes just to make things a little bit easier to clean up. You'll need three non-permanent markers of different colors and a stapler. And from your kit, you're going to need your three petri dishes, your test tubes, a beaker is optional, pipette is optional, the small yellow um, measuring and mixing spoon. Additionally, you're going to need your filter paper as well. And, of course, you're going to need your urea crystals. And it's important that you are careful with these. Use gloves if necessary. Just make sure that they don't touch, accidentally touch your eyes, your nasal passages, or your mouth. And be careful not to mix this with any other things you're working on um, with other experiments as well. Okay, so I've already prepared um, the start of this experiment. We're going to learn a little bit about how crystals form naturally. And... I have already put into each petri dish 15 milliliters of water using um, a test tube. Uh, you can pour from the beaker into the test tube. The test tube is measured in smaller increments, which makes sure that you get exactly 15 milliliters of water. You can use your pipette to put the water in the test tube. And additionally, I have used my yellow measuring spoon to put about a scoop and a half of the urea crystals in each, and I've mixed them up until they are dissolved, until you can't see them anymore. Now, for the next part, I'm going to open my filter paper, and I'm going to take three sheets, three of these little discs. And I'll put the rest away so that I can use them for other experiments so they don't accidentally get wet or something. Now I'm going to take one and I'm going to fold it in such a way that I can have two ends kind of together, kind of in the shape of a little cone or something like that, kind of like a little party hat with a little opening here. And I'm going to staple, if I can, or it's probably easier just to staple the two sides together. Ah, yeah, that's easier. See if that'll work. And then I'm going to see if I can get it to stand up on its own. You can also cut off the bottom. I'm just going to rip mine off because my scissors aren't handy. I just want it to be able to kind of stand up. Yeah. And then I'm going to place it into one of my petri dishes. There we go. I'm going to repeat the procedure. And you can already see that the, the solution is being sucked up into the filter paper. If I can get my stapler to cooperate. You also have the option of doing this in slightly different order if you want to. Um, you can first, we're going to use our markers and color the top edge of the filter paper. You can do that first or you can do it second. It doesn't really matter. It's a little less messy if you do it first. Um, but, oh wow, it's already absorbing quite fast. So I'll just rip the bottom off this. I'll go ahead and color the top of this one. I'll use this red color. And I just kind of want to make a line, a thick line at the top, around the top. So that it looks something like this. And 
open it a little bit and set it upright in my solution. I'm going to go ahead and take the yellow and hold this one and give it a nice little, little color on the top here. Yeah. Doesn't need to be a specific amount, just enough that you can clearly see what color you use. And let me go ahead and color the top of the third disc. Yeah, this works much, much better if you just take your disc like so and just make a line across the top. Fold it so the color's on the outside. Staple. And then rip or cut the bottom off. You want them all to be about the same height. Come on, stand up, friend. Okay, he's gonna wanna fall down. Kinda of move him over to the side a little bit, that's fine. Okay, so what we're going to notice, and it's important that you record your results over time, that not only is the solution going to be absorbed up into the filter paper, but as natural evaporation occurs, as the water in the solution naturally evaporates out into the air, it will leave crystals behind. The crystals that were originally dissolved into the solution, the water is going to leave them and they're going to sit behind, kind of like salt in the ocean. And after 30 minutes, after an hour, after a day, after three days, it's important that you draw and note what structures are left behind when you, oh, okay, when you sit and you, you watch what happens. And make a note for all three of them at the same time at the 30 minute mark, the one hour mark, for example. And the colors, what you should notice is that the moisture comes up and it will start mixing with the colors in the paper and it should change the crystal colors as well. I'd be interested to know your results. For example, um, you can change a few of the variables if you add a little bit more color. Maybe your color band of blue is actually more like an inch thick that will change how much of the crystals are colored. The bottom ones may be white, but the top part may be blue. For example, maybe you want to add different colors to the same. That's also optional. And for other experiments, you can try with different crystals. You can try, for example, salt, sugar, and the urea crystals. So make sure you make accurate recordings. I'll see you next time.